yeah. You're watching Coffee or Beer on Hold Tight TV, brought to you on behalf of Hold Tight PR. My name's Darren, and this is the only show that gets people in the music industry talking about how they really feel about things and asking the very important question, what's your drink of choice, coffee or beer? My guest today is Mr. James Monteith. Thanks for coming in today, man. Hello. Um... <laughs> No choice, really. I think it's beer. He's gone for the beer, which is great because I didn't actually fill up these coffee cups. So <laughs> there we go. James is one of the two guitarists in the band Tesseract, as well as one of the managing partners here at Hold Tight PR. Let's start with Tesseract. First of all, how's the band going? Band as well. Um, we've just, <coughs> excuse me, finished um, uh, a long touring period for our fourth album, Sonder, taking it a bit easier for the next couple of months, focusing on the next record and focusing on the day job. When did you guys meet? Uh, we, I guess, I, well, I was in a band with the bass player back when we were at school at uh, Amos. We've been in bands uh, well forever. Uh, we were playing in a band and we crossed paths with a band called Fell Silent. And in that band was Ackle, who's the principal songwriter of Tesseract. Right. And we became friends with him. And then Ackle met Jay when his, his, Jay's, one of Jay's other bands called Araya, I think, was play, played with Fell Silent. They met, and so we basically all met on the gigging circuit. We're from all over the country, but none of us are actually from the same place except for me and Amos. Does that make getting together and practicing hard? Um, no, because we don't really get together and practice. <laughs> just naturally, just all wing come it. Out with it. Wing it every time. <laughs> wing it. <laughs> so you must have played shows like up and down the country in the, in the early days when you first getting started, mm -hmm. touring off your own back. How was that? Um, it was actually quite tough because nobody really was kind of got what we were doing. So we managed to book random little shows in pubs and that kind of thing. Um, uh, all of your own back with the all of your own back, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we could, we couldn't get any get any get on it get on any other shows for a long time. Um, but we did start to draw a bit of an audience ourselves, partly because Ackles um, Tesseract MySpace, which dates it, um, did actually attract quite a few followers. And so that, well, that was really working. Mm. Yeah, yeah. MySpace MySpace was fantastic back in the day. Like yeah. it really helped reach people um, and we actually hooked up with a band called the Roosh Record who we met in Reading and they were another techie metal band doing something a bit weird like us and we organized a five date tour and that was our first ever tour I think it was in 2007 right and um, and yeah I guess it's all just been kind of baby steps from then until then until now how did you gain traction and when did the kind of the tipping point come for you guys I don't think that was ever a tipping point really it was all just baby steps growing um, uh, more opportunities came up that we did mostly ourselves. We, we were a DIY band, or DIY band for a very long time and to a degree we're still quite hands-on partly because of that. So do you have a say in the live show and how it, and how it looks and how it all plays out to the, to the set? Uh, yeah, we um, are fully involved in all of that. Um, um, Amos, uh, the bass player, is he comes up with lots of the concepts and the ideas and he works with Mike, our lighting designer, to create the whole show. How many shows do you think you've played? like in total now. Just to give people like an idea of literally how many shows does it take to kind of get as solid as you guys are now? I don't know, I don't think we've quite hit a thousand, but I'd say we're approaching it. Do you still love touring? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. I mean, it can be hard, mm. but it's, uh, you know, it's a massive privilege to be able to go and play music to people. And, All over the world. And I think, yeah, no matter how hard the grind is, you should never forget that it's a privilege. Like not everybody gets to do it. Sure. And we're very lucky to be able to. What are, your, what are your roles like within the band? How does it? How do you all function as a unit together? Uh, I guess um, like Amos, who does the you know, lots of like the concept and design work, he's also quite a driving force. He's the one that's very motivating and gets everybody going. He's, I guess, in a way, kind of almost adopts sort of band leader kind of role because he's yeah he he keeps on top of everything. Um, Akko, the other guitarist, is the main sort of his principal songwriter. And um, we all kind of come up with ideas and chuck them in the pot. Um, but he's the guy that pulls it all together in his home studio and turns everything into the finished things. Jay, our drummer, uh, well, he runs rehearsal rooms and we use his rehearsal room and he stores our stuff. Great. Um, he also does lots of filming, lots of content. So he's really good for that side of things. Oh, there's Dan, our singer. I mean, he's, he's, he's the front man, so he, he takes on front man. He's got the easy job. <laughs> It's true. He's also the, the famous one. He's the one that everyone recognises. <laughs> yeah. So he, he he takes on being the famous person. That's his job. Being famous, famous Dan. Does he get stopped in Waitrose? Uh, 
know, he's like out shopping. Uh, he's stopped an Aldi, mate. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. cool. Obviously, you guys will be making presumably a bit of an income from the band by now, but taking so much time out for tour, mm. how do you, what do you, do you, all, you all have jobs on the side? So, um, uh, Ackle and Amos do lots of studio work. Um, Jay, as I mentioned, runs rehearsal rooms, but he also does graphic design work. Um, and Ackle, when I just mentioned him, who else? Dan, Dan's a vocal coach. Okay. So that's his, his kind of side, side job, if you like. I want to ask about the PR, but just before I do, you've played some amazing shows and you've been all over the world and seen some amazing countries. What's been one of the standouts for you? Um, well, that's really hard. Um, we did some amazing ones from the festival run this year and the Copenhagen, Copenhagen was really, really cool. And Varken was amazing. The crowds are insane there, right? They really just love, crowds. they love live music. Mm. And we once played a gig on top of an igloo in Finland, and that was pretty insane. That's, no. a, that's a big igloo. It was quite a big igloo. Um, I mean, it was like minus 10 outside. And then weirdly, because it was really still, it was, it was fine if you were playing, but if you ever stopped, you could feel your joints seizing, seizing up. up. Mm. That would have been, you guys wouldn't have been able to play the music you played, if, uh, even if you slowed down a tiny bit from the cold. Whose yeah. right idea was it to play in uh, Jägermeister. Was it fin- Finland? Yeah, it was Ooh. a Jägermeister promotional show. So. Oh, okay, right. So don't say no to that. Yeah, yeah, and it was really good fun, and we got to drink lots of Jägermeister. So. Ain't no bad thing. So, for you then, at its core, what what is PR? I think PR is basically amplify, amplifying something that already exists. It's basically, in this case, in the case of music, it's taking a band and uh, looking at what's exciting about them and shouting about that really loudly, right. making sure the people that we will find that interesting and can shout even louder and know about it. Mm-hmm. And basically spreading the word about the brilliant things about that band. What do the bands need to have a great, uh, a successful PR campaign, ideally? Um, they need to be a good band. Mm. Actually, no, not always, actually. They can sometimes can be a shit band, but I think... <laughs> but polish a turn in this business, basically. You can do if you get lots of the other things right. Right. Bands need to, I don't know, have a certain amount, small amount of momentum themselves. I think sometimes people think PR can be a quick fix. It's mm. like, oh, I've got this project. We played a gig at, I don't know, I was going to say the New Cross Inn, but New Cross Inn's kind of cool now. Yeah. Played a gig at the Amersham Arms. Oof. And uh, yeah, like nobody's turning up. We must, get, we must hire a PR. I mean, that's not the case at all. I think basically a band needs to have something going on for them. Um, so I think what bands need to do is once they've written their music and they're rehearsing, to get out there, play shows, try and build a bit of momentum themselves, build up a bit of a following online. Because I think there needs to be something, there needs to be a spark that's attracting people to, to that band at a very mm-hmm. low level for PR to then amplify that. And I think there's a certain amount of, quite a lot of groundwork bands could do themselves before. Um, Getting in touch with you. Yes. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see from, from bands when they're reaching out to you? Um, quite often not knowing what kind of music we do. It's like, you know, you'll get like a hip hop artist get, coming in, getting in touch. I mean, I love hip hop, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Who um, doesn't? Before approaching a PR company, make sure that they do the music that you, you know, they'll, they'll understand your music. Yeah. yeah. Um, secondly, people write in and say they want X, Y, Z. They don't send in any music. They don't send in any information. That's a big problem. But I think quite often bands don't really know what it is they need. And they send in emails in the hope that somebody will give them answers. But quite often, nobody is going to give you an answer. You have to kind of figure that little bit out yourselves because people are busy. Right. So a lot of bands come looking for their hand to be held, and they really need to do a lot of the hard grafting work themselves first. Yeah, they need to. I think before you start contacting anybody in the industry, you need to basically really work on your product. Your, not, I say product, I mean your music, mm-hmm. and um, get out there start playing don't think you can just break on the internet right some i mean some people can do blow up on the internet but like it's a fraction of the new bands that are out there sure and a lot of the bands we work with it doesn't it's it doesn't work that way it's much better to to make it on the road first and hone your craft playing live i think so yeah it's like at the end of the day you're in a band you're not i know a meme mm. yeah. You're, yeah you're not looking to go viral you're looking to play shows yeah right? Sorry. Think about why you're in a band in the first place. You, know? you are one of the managing partners here at Hold Type PR. And how did you get into PR in the first place? Well, when I was a younger person, um, I got a job 
uh, a media intelligence company called Gorkana who um, uh, do a number of things, but what they kind of do is connect journalists and PR people in the consumer and financial and B2B worlds. And I was working for them and I was basically, I learned about how PR works and I kind of thought, well, I really want to work in music. Mm. I should apply what I'm learning here to music. And I'm a friend of mine called Rob, uh, who worked for a charity at the time, put on a, a charity gig headlined by Bonobo, it had Four Hero, Lou Rhodes, and a bunch of other artists uh, playing. And um, he basically said, would you like to do some PR for me? Can you help out? And I jumped at the opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I kind of made it up and got winged away with it. it. Wing, I completely winged it, got right. away with it. And I was like, ah, oh, right, this, this isn't so hard. I can do this. And um, it was around about that time, Barley from Basic Records was scouting out Tesseract and he came around to our studio and he had a listen. Um, well, basically, I said to him, I, I asked him if he had any PR for his label and he said no. And I said, well, you know, can I come and do it? Right. And he said, all right then. You offered it up for free? It's for free, yeah. I was basically like, because I didn't know what I was doing. It was you like, just to get a foot in the door. I was like, I want to give this a go. Can I give it a go? It all, well, I mean, the rest is history because we did lots of work with Basic. Basic, we were very lucky that Basic was putting out bands at the time that were very exciting mm. um, and um, connected with the press very quickly. So we yeah. had lots of early successes. And then off the back of that, Barley and I started Hold Tight back in 2010. Right, well, you started it together. Yeah, Barley actually was, um, yeah, he was my partner. Oh, the awesome. Since then, the company's just grown and grown. Uh, yeah, um, very quickly we brought Lisa in as a partner. She was also doing some work for Basic as well. So she was obviously a perfect fit. Um, and Lisa and I are still the partners. Um, Barley's no longer with us. He's still alive. Good, um, he's, that's good, that's good news. He, he's not at Hold Tight anymore. He's, um, uh, he's, he's the UK man for Believe Digital now. So he's, he's doing very well in his in his new, new world. Um, but yeah, um, so I guess that was nearly eight years ago now. Um, and over that time, uh, we've had a number of interns come through, two of which have stayed, um, Matt and Hannah, who um, have basically been amazing and helped us grow to where we are now. Shout out to Matt and Hannah. Yeah, I mean, they're not interns now, though. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> running like running call, their own ships. We yeah. like to call Matt the uh, perpetual intern because, yeah. <laughs> just, just quite glad just, of that. Just him up. <laughs> what is that video that you make all the interns watch when they start at Hold Type? Ah, well, there are a few. But the one you're talking about yeah. is basically the what one. What I've heard about, yeah. Yeah, you know, this one is basically see if um, they got the stomach to cope with our bad sense of humour and death metal in its most extreme forms. Mm -hmm. Was that forced gender reassignment by cattle decapitation? Cattle decapitation, <laughs> forced gender reassignment. Woo! Oh, that doesn't sound good. If anyone else can see that and stomach watching it, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to do it. Just put it in the comments and tell me what you think, because uh, apparently it's just horrendous. Look at the man <laughs> and imagine a video of exactly that. Yeah, well, uh, my imagination is going to some scary places. What's been a standout moment for you at Hold Tight? Um, I don't know, I guess there have been a few. Like, uh, I mean, even this year we worked on the High on Fire campaign and they went on to win a Grammy as part of their global campaign, which yeah, was cool. the basic thing to be a part of. Very cool. Um, um, last year uh, we had... Um, Couple of wins of the Golden Gods. That was really nice. I think that was Wes Borland and um, Coyote on. Uh, was he all dressed up? No, he wasn't. He he was what? looking very very normal. Um, Lame. I remember one of the most fun campaigns we did was a band called um, Necro Goblicon. Who were just a bunch. Of, yeah. That's not the kind of thing you want to say ten times really quickly. No, no, it's a bit of a mouthful. But they were just hilarious fun to work with, um, and they're basically a, a death metal band. With a goblin in the band, and the goblin's a comedian, so it's very, very funny. Uh, <laughs> stuff, you know, there, there are loads of highlights, but I guess the main, the main thing is, is that I've enjoyed is growing this company, and um, especially having Matt and Hannah grow in their own rights. Like Hannah's become a really awesome radio plugger. Just this year alone, she's had some amazing campaigns at the moment. Back with gender roles, she's um, mm. got all over Annie Mac show, loads of rock show plays, and just has, you know Jack Saunders, and not for gender roles from another band, but. Um, uh, Hugh Stevens, like she's basically really nailing the Radio One kind of uh, specialist rock shows, and doing an amazing job, um, as well as like John Kennedy and Radio X, and like she's got she's developed a great ear for bands that she knows all work on radio, which is what you want like, with a radio plugger, a plugger that mm. basically says, if the plugger says to you, I can get this in the radio, you have trust that they'll be able to do it, right. and then they do a great job, um, and she's becoming one of those, and I'm really proud of being able to help her develop. Uh, develop that 
and Matt's becoming really strong PR. They, his campaign he did for Conjure. Um, great band. And great campaign. I think they've probably been in the, for a new, a new band, been in the press more than any other band in the last year. Mm. And, um, and that's down to Matt's hard work and determination. Someone looking to get into this job, mm. um, if they're on the fence, what, do they, what should they do? Would you just say, would you just say, go for it? Um, like you did, throw yourself into the fire, um, foot in the door, work for free, whatever it takes to do it, if someone's looking to go into this business. I think, yeah, if you really want to do it, you do need to throw yourself in and take any opportunities that come your way. Mm. I think, I mean, this is just from my own experience, but basically um, I just took absolutely any job, any opportunity I could do to work with anyone, um, to connect with people, to network, get, get to know people. Again, networking can be a bit daunting, like, yeah. And there's quite a lot of people in the music industry can be very loud and gregarious and a bit hard to deal with if you don't like that kind of person. But you kind of need to get over a load of those fears and just realise that everybody is just in the game to try and get somewhere and make friends and work with people. I think that's, that's right. a key thing. It is working with people. Mm, yeah, working with people is a 100% job. If you're not a very good people person, it's probably not the thing for you. Okay, yeah. Where would you like to see Tesseract going and where would you like to see Hold Tight going? Um, I think one thing which I've learned about the music industry is everything changes constantly and you need to basically keep up with those changes and try and be as ahead of the curve as possible and um, for both both of those things I want to make sure that that's what they're doing I want to make sure that Hold Tight is providing a relevant and useful service to its clients I want to make sure that it's interesting and ex providing interesting and exciting kind of content um, in terms of the PR side of things. Like, I was just having this conversation downstairs with Adam Seguir um, of Noise Guard Time. We were talking about the death of PR, <laughs> which is all very dark. Yeah, it sounds a bit morbid. But um, one thing that I don't think PR will ever, I think the relevance of PR will remain in terms of story creation and content and finding angles. I think, I think social media digital marketing is always going to have its place getting things in front of the right people and i think that's all that's good it's growing and it's you know more potentially more important than pr now for, for smaller bands reaching that specific audience yeah but i think i think pr is still going to be important in terms of creation of stories and telling stories i think people are always still going to want stories they're going to want something to read they're all going to want to know about the back the background or something they're going to yeah. want to know about someone's interests they're going to want to know an opinion I think that's where PR is always going to have a role, and I want to sort of explore that a bit more on the PR side. Um, and yeah, I guess with the band, I just want to make sure that we keep putting out music that's interesting and people like. And you enjoy playing. Mm. Yeah, great. Thank you. Well, this has been really good fun. Thanks very much for being for coming along and doing it, um, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed it today, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and uh, we'll see you again for another episode of Coffee or Beer. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>